Welcome to another Pipeline Safety video production in which we will be discussing W.C. Striegel's Safe Abrasive Blasting Program. The purpose of this program is to protect health and to prevent injury to employees engaged in abrasive blasting operations and to others working in the vicinity by controlling dusts which are dispersed during abrasive blasting, providing an adequate amount of clean air to personnel, and protecting personnel from injury, from flying particles, or from moving equipment. This program applies to all operations where an abrasive is forcibly applied to a surface by pneumatic or hydraulic pressure or by centrifugal force. It does not apply to steam blasting or steam cleaning or hydraulic cleaning methods where this work is done without the aid of abrasives. You also need to know that Wayne Nixon, also known as the safety guy, will review and update this program as necessary. Copies of the written program may be obtained from the W.C. Striegel's Safety Center. The Selection of Abrasives and Equipment each type of abrasive and each type of equipment has its own particular advantages in producing the quality of work desired and the selection will depend on the specific requirements of the job. With properly designed equipment and proper operation and maintenance all types of abrasives and equipment can be used safely. However, the operator should always consider abrasives which create the minimum hazards wherever feasible. Dust hazards from abrasive blasting. First, let's talk about dust sources. Abrasives and the surface coatings on the materials blasted are shattered and pulverized during blasting operations and the dust formed will contain particles of respirable size. The composition and toxicity of the dust from these sources must be considered in making an evaluation of the potential health hazards. Types of abrasives. A large variety of solid materials may be used as abrasives with qualities varying from hard deep cutting to soft polishing. These include mineral grains, either synthetic or natural such as coal slag or garnet, metallic shot or grit, generally of steel or chilled cast iron, and organic abrasives such as ground corn cobs or walnut shells. Silica sand was at one time the most hazardous and commonly used material, but it is no longer allowed as a blasting abrasive material. Now let's talk air supply for compressors. The air used for abrasive blasting operations generally coming from a compressor of some sort must be free of harmful quantities of dust, mists, or noxious gases. For operators breathing safety we must consider the type of respirator to use either supplied air or air purifying respirators. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Supplied air uses ambient air pumps that pump air to the operator. They need to be placed where they will cl draw clean air and especially away from exhausts of running engines, i.e. trucks and or compressor exhausts. They do not require doctor certifications or fit tests. Air purifying respirators may also be used in some circumstances, but to use one of these, the person must be doctor certified and fit tested for the device used, and these records must be on file at our safety center. Dust masks are not permitted respirators fit for blasting operations. Now on to operational procedures and general safety. To prevent static electricity discharge, 
the blast nozzle must be bonded and grounded back to the holding tank and earth ground. Blasting dust must be caught on tarps under the item being blasted and cleaned up promptly. The tank used for the abrasive supply material must have a manual control valve to stop the flow to the nozzle and an employee attending that control valve in case of malfunction of the hose or the nozzle. Blast cleaning nozzles must be equipped with an operating valve which must be held open manually. This is sometimes called the dead man's switch. And proper PPE which includes safety glasses used with a blasting hood or a face shield, a hard hat when a hood is not used, and heavy leather gloves and safety toed boots. In conclusion, remember the purpose of this program is to protect the health and prevent injury to employees engaged in abrasive blasting operations and to others working in the vicinity by controlling dusts and flying debris which are dispersed during abrasive blasting, providing an adequate amount of clean air to personnel, and protecting personnel from injury, from flying particles, or from moving equipment. Remember to always fill out a company JSA and document how the hazards listed above and any other hazards at the job site will be dealt with and share these plans with other employees at the tailgate meeting before you actually start the job.